Hello friends, how are you all doing today? Today I have a uh, video recording, a time lapse of a watercolor painting, which is a first ever for me. I've never done any kind of traditional time lapse videos. This is kind of an interesting, interesting setup, an interesting uh, learning curve working in this way. Uh, I painted a uh, a landscape slash sort of a a fantasy illustration of a like pale woman riding through the forest on her horse and you know she's got like these mystical abilities where she's able to bring this dead forest back to life by touching things in it um so I painted this probably this took me a while but that's mostly honestly because I'm a very slow artist this is like I don't know it's probably almost like eight hours of footage I probably could have done it in less time but like I said I'm slow so uh, sorry if this video is like really long. I tried to cut it down to a reasonable length. Uh, hopefully it's manageable. If you guys don't like that, if you want it to be shorter, honestly, let me know. I can cut more out. Um, I'm sure no one wants to watch me paint trees for like half an hour because that's what this started out as a half an hour video. But anyway, what I wanted to talk to you guys about today is sort of my experience from transitioning from primarily a digital artist to a traditional artist, as well as uh, my struggles with this piece and my process and some things that I liked about it too, some things that I, I was quite happy with how they turned out. So I guess we can start with uh, what it was like to transition from digital art to traditional art. Now for years, I've always been, you know, primarily digital artist. Traditional art has always been a way to facilitate the creation of digital works. So for example, I do like concept sketches or thumbnails traditionally because it was easier and faster. However, generally, especially my paintings are always done digitally. Um, if you go and look at my Instagram and DeviantArt, pretty much all of my past work is digital for that reason because it's always been easier for me to create and not only create, but also to share. Um, for many years I didn't really have uh, any kind of way to make these traditional paintings that I was doing or traditional drawings even that I was doing uh, really look nice, any way to showcase them in a way that made me feel confident in the end result. And that's something that I really struggled with too, you know, I wanted to share some of this art, but I wanted to share it um, in a way that made me feel confident with the way that it was displayed to you guys, my audience. Um, and now that I'm kind of, you know, a little bit older, I've been able to save up some money and kind of get a setup going that I'm confident with, it's been easier for me to actually share and display these things. So some things that I really struggle with with traditional art is, uh, I guess, not really being a very confident painter. You know, I, I like the handicap and the crutch of having an undo tool and having the ability to mess with the colors. If I don't like the way something's turned out, I can just select an area and adjust. And I'm sure that as I do more digital works and record them for you guys, that's going to become quite obvious that I do a lot of color editing after I put colors down. And it's partially because I, I think that in the moment when I'm selecting them, it's not, especially digitally, really imperative that I'm making a decision that has to last for the, you know, entire time on the piece. It doesn't need to stay there. And so I can just adjust it. You know, I can make it, I can make blue green if I really wanted to, if I don't like how it turned out in the final work. But with traditional painting, you can't do that. Um, especially with watercolor, the washes are so light that it's a little bit easier to adjust and flub things uh, once they're already on the paper, especially because I will often go in with pencil crayons for like really small details if I can't um, comfortably do them with the paint. But for the most part, it's a very different approach because I have to be confident with my own art and what I'm applying to the paper as it goes down. Um, <laughs> there's not really any post processes, particularly if I'm looking at you know, potentially selling a piece or doing it as a commission even. Um, and it's really hard for me personally to become confident uh, with a lot of, you know, the, the, the permanency 
of a lot of traditional art mediums. And I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing, uh, but I think that it's important that as artists we're willing to learn and experiment with a lot of, you know, different mediums, um, even if it's outside of our comfort zone. And so I've been really pushing myself to get into, you know, experimenting more. Uh, not, not only with watercolor, I've been actually forcing myself to draw daily. And it's been a long, long time since I've had to do uh, any kind of like daily sketchbook drawing. But I, um, I've been watching a lot of like sketchbook videos and wanting to change my approach to how I keep a sketchbook. Um, I still have some that I use, you know, just for concept works and just for thumbnail sketching because um, they're not very pretty, honestly. My thumbnails are always really messy and gross and probably no one ever wants to see them. So I, uh, I bought myself a new sketchbook when I went to go pick up some watercolor supplies, uh, like paper and whatnot, from the art store um, about a couple of weeks ago. And I've been working through that and drawing daily. And so far, I haven't missed a day, which I'm very proud of because I honestly would have thought that I would have abandoned the daily art idea already. Because it's really hard, especially on days where I'm working, to keep up with that. Um, and I mean, like, working, like, my real job, not not the fun one, not the art job. Um, but anyway, I guess for now it's probably a good time to talk about some of the things that I'm working on in this piece. Um, I do quite like how the background came about in this one. I almost wish that I had done this as, like, just a background piece and done, like, another one of the figure. And I may still do that later because I like, you know, the kind of dark forest background. And it was really, really fun to do with these watercolors. Um, for this piece, I actually am experimenting with a new set of watercolors as well. It's the White Knights, uh, the full pan set with a 32, 36 color, something like that. Um, and I like them a lot. I love the brown tones. I love, love, love a lot of the darker blue tones in this set too. And Violet out of that White Knight set is was very heavily used in this piece for a lot of the shadows. And I think that was also something I was quite happy with, uh, the decision to unify a lot of the tones with either indigo or violet, I think made the piece look more cohesive in the end. You know, there's, the pale woman will always kind of feel, you know, like she's kind of a foreigner in this environment, but the environment itself, I think, feels quite cohesive because I intentionally made uh, the woman feel kind of ethereal and I used a lot of natural and kind of vibrant colors I didn't use in the rest of the piece for that reason. But the background, I think, came together quite nicely. I don't know if I'm super happy with how the horse turned out. It's been a long time since I've drawn or painted a horse and I considered like just doing like some pages of like sketching, but I kind of wanted to get this idea out before I was second guessing it too much and, you know, before um, I, I didn't really have any the, the time available to do this recording and to kind of get things going with that. So uh, the horse, I don't know, I like it. I like the front half better than the back half. I think the head is okay. I think that the shading on the flank, you know, like the sides, they turned out, it turned out pretty good. Um, I'm not unhappy with it necessarily, but I think that if I were to do it again, I probably would take a different angle to this piece. And I still might do another thing with this character. I quite like her. I think she's cool. I like her face a lot. Um, I like kind of like this pseudo albinism thing she's got going on because I think albino characters and albino features tend to be quite striking. I kind of wanted to carry across those features in my character. I might push her some more if I do paint her again and uh, just like give her albinism and um, like red eyes and whatnot. I think that might be kind of fun to experiment with in the future. But overall, I think that this turned out pretty well, um, or she turned out pretty well, that is. I also like how the hair turned out for the most part. I think maybe I could have made it a little bit more flowy, but um, I think the acrylic layered that I used her hair, for her hair layered quite nicely over top of the watercolor and it doesn't look too out of place or obtrusive. I think I intentionally kind of, you know, wanted to leave kind of a white spot. I, you'll, you'll see earlier in the piece when I do the background washes that I don't 
continue them all the way down behind her and I think that was to kind of tie her into the space around her better and I think that carries across pretty okay. One thing that I did find that I struggled with actually and it's something I think I do struggle with with traditional painting is laying down background washes because I'm always afraid that it'll touch an area that I'm not going to want the background wash color and I don't like using masking fluid um, very much at all mostly because it's more, you know, the transition between the masked areas and the background wash or whatnot is less organic and it's less, uh, it, it's, it blends less naturally. Uh, one thing that I really, 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 really like about my art is when I can get colors to blend and like there to be a transition in your step from the foreground to the background and not have them look like completely disconnected, like cutouts almost. Um, it's something I've really struggled with for a long time, and I think I'm working to improve it slowly. Uh, my pieces that have backgrounds, generally, these days, I'm pretty happy with how they turn out. Uh, well, considering, like, depth and whatnot, um, and it's something I've worked hard to improve on, so... Yeah. I think that if I were to do this piece again, I would probably look at doing a couple of things differently. Um, I think I would probably add, you know, some some more um, darkness and depth to the front as far as the actual ground went. I like how the ground turned out in this piece, but I think especially, you know, like up around the trees and whatnot, maybe I could have made some more like little foliage pieces and made things like, you know, more uh, like look like a busier forest, you know, not necessarily a more vibrant forest because obviously I'm going for like the, the kind of dead look but it doesn't necessarily look very full to me personally currently and that would be something I would definitely look at changing. One thing that I think I like quite a lot um, is the tones in the horse. I'm not necessarily happy with the overall like quote unquote drawing of the horse but I think the actual tones in its fur turned out quite nicely um including kind of especially like i really like how the front legs turned out i like that effect that i got with the watercolors where they're kind of blended but kind of not like there's harsh lines of shadow i do like a number of things about these paints in particular i like the texture once they're on the paper like you know how some paints not even necessarily they're chalky in the pan but they feel chalky on the paper I find that not very comfortable to paint on because I'm so bad for like resting my hand directly on the paper. I don't like holding pens and paintbrushes from a mile back. I know that's really like not what you're supposed to do when you're holding a brush. You're not supposed to hold it right by the front. And for some things I don't, but the most comfortable position for me is generally to be quite close to the paper. I also really like the color selection in this set quite a lot. I think that it's adaptable. Like I got, I think I got a quite quite a nice skin tone out of it and I think I also had a lot of colors to work with for the background elements which I didn't get with my uh, Kuratake set um, which isn't necessarily like a bad thing I could make some kind of interesting uh, color selections out of that one there were a lot of greens to work with that in that set which were really nice but I do definitely like having the option to have a lot of browns to play with um, it just gave me a lot to work with, especially in what essentially ended up being a very tree-heavy environment. I know it may not look it, but there's a lot of variation in the background colors and the background washes that I used for this one, and a lot of it was like just browns and purples mixed together, or browns and uh, indigo, or blues. Um, and I found that it was more visually interesting to me to do that, uh, to paint with a lot of different but similar uh, washes in the background. I also really enjoyed how the grass texture turned out in this. I want to paint so much more like texture into the ground that I'm working on uh, from now on. I think that it it's more visually interesting for sure but also it was really fun to do like just adding these little tiny background like little step uh, little marks and like little like gravel granules or like dirt pattern to the ground. It was really fun to do. So one thing I really enjoyed adding to this piece was right at the end. Uh, as part of that Kuratake set, um, it's the silver pigment, I guess. 
I love adding glitter and sparkly stuff. In general, I don't actually glitter because glitter kind of scares me, but the sparkly stuff has been in, I think, every single watercolor painting I've finished up to this point. I think it's so much fun to work with and adding really any kind of paint that does like shifts in the light, I think it's really special. And I think it just adds something nice, especially if you're planning on selling prints to the original piece because it makes it stand out and you can obviously tell that it's different. Anyway, so I think that's everything I wanted to cover today, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in, uh, especially if you stayed to the end of this video. I appreciate it a lot. I know that I like to talk and ramble a lot, but if you'd like to hear me talk about something else in the future, if you want like a specific uh, not necessarily tutorial, but need to talk about a specific topic or maybe the way I do things in the future, definitely let me know. Uh, you can follow me at my social media below um, for more of my paintings, more of my digital works, and more of my sketches. I'm on Instagram and DeviantArt the most, so if you want to follow me there, that would be awesome. I really hope you guys have a great day, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye!